You are listening to What We Should Have Learned in School. Over the past few weeks, I've really been reflecting on how to make the unrealistic goals and dreams we have for our lives into reality. If you've listened to this podcast for a little while, you know that I've always had a passion for music. And so I've been in the process of writing new songs. And one song has been inspired by my dear friend, Kelly Munsrud. And if you don't know about Kelly, I'm going to tell you a little bit about his story because I think there's a piece of all of us in Kelly's story. When I first met Kelly, I was automatically filled with a very warm, comfortable feeling. He was one of these larger-than-life characters and just exuded almost a childlike joy. It's like his excitement for music and possibility didn't go away even though he was in his mid-40s. And Kelly, like myself, had always had big dreams involving music. And he put in a lot of hours as a young boy on the farm where he grew up. And so when he was in his 20s, he moved down to Phoenix with a band. They started doing really well. They were touring. And back then there was no YouTube. So you really had to be signed by a record label in order to to make a decent living as a musician. And so his band ended up getting a showcase gig with two very powerful record labels, Polygram Records and Sony Records. So there were going to be representatives from those record labels at that showcase gig. Now, of course, this isn't the firsthand account of the story, but from what I gather, Kelly was really a mess before that show. And he didn't know what to do. I'm sure he was a bundle of nerves And he had conversations with his wife at the time. And they decided that he wasn't going to continue with the band, but he couldn't bring himself to tell the guys. I mean, they'd worked so hard. This was their dream. And so Kelly asked the guys to pull over on the way to the gig and explained that he couldn't continue and that he quit the band that night. And then they ended up canceling the gig. And then Kelly moved back home. And his mom passed away, I believe it was, the day that he got back and he wasn't even able to see his mom uh, before she passed. And then there were decades of, of ups and downs, like we all have for Kelly after that, where he would kind of put music and his dreams for music on the shelf, and he entered, you know, a, a stable, steady job. He did well at that. He ended up having two wonderful children that he was so proud of. And after a lot of ups and downs and and battling some of his own demons and his own addictions, and, and Kelly was very open about um, having an addiction to alcohol for a period in his life. And so when I met Kelly in 2015, his kind of dark night of the soul was behind him and he was really on the up and up. He was getting involved with being mentored by other musicians and connecting with other musicians. And his eyes and heart were so full of love and so full of hope. And Kelly and I even ended up not only uh, doing some music projects together, but he was actually the producer of this podcast. So Kelly was right there with me when this all started over three years ago, this podcast journey. And in 2017, when Kelly was just 47 years old, I woke up to a Facebook message of a picture of Kelly and the words, rest in peace. He had died suddenly. We just thought that he had the flu. I mean, we were literally working on a podcast. I believe we were working on actually a podcast about the Las Vegas shootings. It was around that time. One minute Kelly was here and one minute he was gone. I'm not sharing this story to make you sad, but I'm sharing it as a reality check today that maybe there's a reason that you're listening to this right now. Because we, we play a lot of mind games with ourselves. We really don't tend to see that our imagination isn't reality. Now, of course, from common sense, we know that, but we don't, we don't behave like we know that to be true. Because one of the things I, I think it was with Kelly of why he quit 
And I can re- relate to this piece myself. And if you have any dreams of your own or any big goals or wishes for your future, you might have a similar feeling of the sensation, well, what if I really try? What if I honestly gave it my all and I still failed? For some reason that paralyzes many of us human beings because we imagine what it would be like to have failed, to have really tried, and what that would say about us. But ultimately, unless we give our heart and soul to something, we'll never know. Kelly passed away never knowing what could have happened if he had sang his heart out and played his heart out at that gig all those years ago back in the 90s. When we're each in our last hours, I find it very unlikely that we're going to sit there and wish we wouldn't have tried to do something, wished we wouldn't have gone in a direction of our passion, of our joy, of our dreams. Because even if our dreams don't end up the way we originally wanted, the journey itself changes the trajectory of our life's path. And other opportunities open up that we never would have anticipated before. And furthermore, we're so afraid of emotion because even the sense of failing is a temporary emotion because it's the byproduct of a temporary thought. All thoughts are temporary until we begin to glorify those thoughts, until we attach significance to them. It can be painful. I'm not saying that it isn't painful in some instances, but it also doesn't have to be painful. And it also is something that will pass just by the nature of it being an emotion. And with a clearer head, you can look at what you've done, look with honest eyes into what you could have improved on, if anything, and you continue on your life's path with a sense of purpose, with a sense of, I've done all I can. I have really lived my life. One thing Kelly said that really struck me is that he said, For those years, those 20 odd years where he had kind of a love-hate relationship with music before he fully committed in 2015 to his musical dreams and his own business, he said that he was living life dead. And now that finally he was living life alive. So for the last few years of his life, Kelly was at peace. Kelly had a richness to his life. Even if the monetary benefits weren't there, even if he wasn't famous, it didn't matter to him at that point. It really didn't. You could tell by the way that he showed up in the world. So the moral of the story today is, what can you learn from my really good friend, Kelly? When it comes to making the big decisions in your life, whether to leave or stay in that relationship, whether to take that job, whether to ask that person out, whether to go back to school or to have children or not have children. When it comes to life's big decisions, are you going to fall for the tricks of your imagination? Or will you be able to see that your imagination has no predictive reliability? Just because you think that if you do something It will create all of these effects. It isn't true. I've spoken with folks that have been, for instance, in really difficult relationships for a really long time. And the imagination, the hope that one day it will be different or that it will go back to how it used to be is so powerful that it paralyzes people from making any decision and so they stay. But the only guarantee that you have is what's happening right now. You only need to see the next step in front of you. You don't have to see the whole staircase. I think that was a Martin Luther King quote, and it was a very wise quote. And that's a really great depiction of how life unfolds step by step. So when our imagination runs wild and we're afraid of 
What if we fail and what will that mean? And then we conjure up all these worst case scenarios or on on the other side, we think, what if I succeed? What will that mean? We're just playing a game with ourselves. It's all the same game with different flavors of imagination. But imagination is not reality. And at the end of the day, we only each have oh so much time on this earth. Will you choose to spend it in reality? Or will you, like so many of us, inadvertently become a victim to our own imagination? You've been listening to What We Should Have Learned in School. I'm your host, Amy Leo. It's been a pleasure speaking with you today. I'll talk to you again next week. Nobody listening Live like it's heaven up